Well, good morning. My name is Timothy, pastor of New Life Faith Center. And once again, I want to welcome you to United with Christ. Get all your people, crowd, churches, man, because we're going to have an exciting time right now with United with Christ with the special guest that we have in mind. And the main theme, chosen for glory. God bless. United with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation of Life Christian Broadcasting Television. And now, United with Christ. Well, good morning. Welcome again. We are here united with Christ. Uh, my name is Timothy, pastor of New Life. And again, we're excited to be here in the presence of Channel 38, where I, I, I greatly appreciate the privilege and the honor of hosting, hosting United with Christ today. And I want to uh, encourage you, bless your lives today, uh, especially during this time that we have to speak about the Word of God, that if you have any prayer, any need during our transition, or you want to give a praise or a shout out to Jesus, you can give us a call. Underneath, there's a phone number. It's 915-532-8518. And if during this test, Testimony that we have today with our, our special guest here, you feel the need to say, you know what? Thank God for, for another day because his mercies endure forever. Then you can give us a call at 915-532-8518. Well, without further ado, I would like to welcome you. Uh, so please invite your friends, family, get on that Instagram or Facebook page. Invite everybody because today we have a tremendous word of God from a man of God that has been doing great things within this community and throughout the U.S. of A. And I have the honor and the privilege of presenting to you Pastor Isaiah G Blancas. God bless you, brother. Welcome. God bless you. Uh, and thank you for joining us today. Why don't you introduce yourself? I know you guys have the church in the alley, church without walls. You guys are doing one excellent work. Well, why don't you introduce and, and let us know a little bit about yourself, Pastor? Um, my name's Pastor Isaiah Blancas, they call me the gangster preacher. Hallelujah. That's a nickname they gave me. Um, so what we do here in El Paso is we have church in the alley. And we do that every Sunday. And that's in the OC area off of Myrtle in downtown. And we have church services there every Sunday for the, for the lost, the broken, the hurt, the drug addicts, the homeless, the prostitutes. You know, people that, that Jesus would really want to touch and impact if he was here living in our times, which he is because he still lives through each and every one of us. Um, so that's what we do at Church in the Alley is, is um, give people hope. Um, not just that, we see many, many people changed. It's amazing because we got a spot in the alley where we open a, a fence and they all come in on their own. So it's not something where we're pressuring, you know, these broken people to come in and and hear the word of God. Now we do feed them physically, but they don't, they don't even uh, come just for the food. They come even before for the service on their own. And so we've seen a, a mighty move of God and his mighty hand moving in our area. Um, not just in our area, I, like, like, like my brother Tim here was saying, I traveled throughout the U.S. Amen. Um, I have a book called From the Streets to the Throne by Isaiah Blancas, which is available on Amazon. I've been on the 700 Club, and they're writing a script for my movie right now as we speak. Um, so God is doing amazing things through the Gangs for Jesus ministry, which is the ministry name, Gangsters for Jesus. Um, and we've been, man, he and the devil hard. <laughs> I tell people, you know, and pastors and everyone and, and my ministry, you know, that whenever our feet hit the ground and we wake up and our feet hit the ground, you know, every single day, the enemy should know that there's a soldier up that's ready for battle, Amen. that's ready for war, and he should hear our armor shake and clank every single day. And so the Gangsters for Jesus ministry are 24-7 soldiers that really put it down for King Jesus on this earth as ambassadors of heaven. Hmm. And so for me, it's, it's, it's vital in these end times, which I believe we're, we're, we're close to Jesus coming, to save as many as we can now 
I preach at small churches to medium-sized churches to mega churches to outreaches and um, in the streets. And I teach my ministry the same thing. And, and so for me, it's vital that everyone out there right now in, in these times reaches someone that's broken Amen. or hurt or lost. You know, if, if, if you're out here and you're, you're watching today this, this broadcast and, you know, a lot of times, you know, we get so used to comfortable churches and, and kind of being in a bubble. Mm. And, and like everything is just, you know, all, all, all nice and cute and, and, and beautiful and everyone dresses the same, everyone smells good. Uh, we got to break out of that norm. You know, if, if, if you're watching, you know, this, this day, please, if, if you're even driving by a, a store or a Walmart or whatever the case may be, and you see someone out there that's homeless or broken, mm. or you see that they need Jesus, I know it, a lot of you have been taught, just pray from your car, you know, but, but now is the time for you to get out and do something. That's right. Don't, don't just stay in your car and pray for them from, from afar, but get off and let them know that there's a, a Savior that loves them, that there's a Savior that came to save their souls so they don't have to end up in hell in the lake of fire. That there's a king of kings and lord of lords that, that desperately wants them to go to heaven Amen. and pray for them. Lay hands on the sick, you know, and, and do everything Jesus says. It says in the Bible, you know, to feed the hungry, to clothe the poor, to visit those in prison, mm. you know, to, to take care of the widows, to love your neighbor as, 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 as God has loved you, right? And now is the time to do that. If there's any time to do it. It, the time is now. That's Amen. Right. Amen to that. Brother, well, I mean, great message. Thank you for that encouragement and introduction because Amen. at the end of the day, me and you have a responsibility, yes. not only to serve Christ, like you mentioned, but also to proclaim the gospel. And that's where we're going to go into our theme, Pastor. Uh, I'm going to invite our audience to turn your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 43, verse 7. And we're going to get to the bottom of this with the ministry, what you're doing. And everything that you hear from us is not uh, a, a, a description encouragement or pointing the finger be judgmental but to lift your spirit up yeah. and as a church respond to the call and look what in the, the book of Isaiah chapter 43 verse 7 says it says for everyone who is called by my name you have this responsibility it says who I have created and it says for my glory pastor Isaiah Amen. I have formed them and I have made them in the ministry that you have church in the alley not only are you talking but you're Walking the talk, for lack of a better word. Uh, talk to us a little bit about the service because, I mean, it's a church in the alley. It's a church without walls. Uh, you just go out there and you serve us. Uh, you serve the community. You feed them, you know, the, the, the full gospel, right? You preach to them, uh, spiritual, but you also feed them. What have you seen in the streets in El Paso that you can, you know, encourage the body of Christ to leave that comfort zone, even though we're not against, if you have a building, you no. have chairs, we're not against that. Mm -hmm. But if, if there is this stagnant city within the church, what do you tell the, the, the brothers and sisters in the Lord hearing us what to do, what you've seen out there, my brother? What I would say is, um, first of all, like um, a lot of the people that we preach to and the broken you know, sometimes we see people with their pants hanging, you mm. know, mm -hmm. way low, you know, and, and, and <laughs> churches wouldn't even want them inside their building. Now, a problem that I've seen in the churches is that they say everyone is welcome. But the truth is, is when someone like this comes in that looks like a gang member or that is stinky or that is homeless or that doesn't, you know, fit into their to their norm then they're pretty much kind of like blackballed or, or even most of the times from many people I've talked with kicked out. Now, like my brother Tim said, I'm not against buildings. I'm not against churches. I'm not against any of that. I preach at many churches. I'm always booked at, at churches as well. So I'm not against them. I love them. Um, if anything, what I'm trying to do is open their spiritual eyes to truth so they can see through the spirit realm what God wants them to see. And for them to open their ears spiritually so they can hear from heaven what the God of heaven is trying to tell them to do Amen. in these times that we're living in. You see, so, so it's not condemnation at all. I've had lots of friends with mega churches and big churches 
um, because I've, I, I pretty much know everyone when it comes to uh, Christian oldie singers, to Christian rappers, to the biggest preachers that and anyone on here watching could name. I've, I've met them. And, and, and uh, a thing that I've seen with them when I've had talks with them is they get offended. And they get offended and, and, and act like I'm throwing rocks at them, you see. But the thing is that I'm not trying to throw rocks at them nor offend them. I'm just trying to shake them a little bit and mm. wake them up, mm. you know, because because these people out here, you know, they might not see this, but I do. So I was telling someone here today before we came in here and, and started this live program, you know, a lady I was talking with outside that um, I preach at, at big, beautiful churches sometimes. And and um, I know some some people have quite a bit of money, you know what I'm saying? And and after I preach in these nice places, I, let's say, for instance, San Francisco, I'll preach at nice places in San Francisco, California. Then I'll go to the Tenderloin District. Now, the Tenderloin District is a, um, it's a broken area, miles and miles and miles. And you will see everything from naked women dancing on glass like they're ballerinas to people shooting dope up right in front of you to satanic people passing tracks out to homosexuals being there, lesbians, um, drag queens walking around. Um, I mean, drug dealers rolling around in Rolls Royces, dropping dope off to, to their drug dealers to sell to all these people. And you'll see the cops right there literally parked, and they don't do not one thing. And, and so for me, it, it's a big need, a big gap that needed to be filled mm. in the body of Christ on this earth. You see, I think we've got so comfortable and, like I said earlier, so much in a bubble that, I mean, I, I, I got to be honest, I don't even think God is happy right now because in Revelations it talks about the seven churches. Mm. And, and he points out different things about the seven churches that they're doing wrong and it's not good. You know, and, and, and one verse says, come back to your first love. Amen. You know, and, and so when I see a lot of these churches, I don't see them working with the broken. I don't see them working with the prostitutes, with someone that's shooting dope. Like I said, with someone with their pants down that's, that's pretty much naked, you know. And when we hit the streets here in El Paso and church in the alley that we have, you know, a lot of these people do not even, at first, right, because we've been doing this a, a while now, at first they did not even feel comfortable with us praying for them in the area they're at. Mm. So what makes any church think that they're going to feel comfortable going into their church the way that, that they act. That's right. Or, or this facade that they've put up, you know, that, that, that the church never has problems, right? And, and that we're, we're a perfect church. And if you ask a brother or sister, like if I was here and I asked him, hey, bro, how you doing? Everything's great. Everything's always great and this and that and, and, and never being real. And, and never saying, hey, you know what? I, I feel broken right now. You know what? I'm going through something right now. You know what? I'm hurt right now. And I think for my ministry, the Gangs for Jesus, what has helped us a lot is that many of us can relate to these people because we come from the streets. Hmm. We come from gangs. We come from organized crime. We come from hopelessness. We come from broken homes. You know, a lot of us come from military backgrounds and, 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 and just different types of backgrounds like that where we can relate to these people. And, and so I think it's, a, it's an amazing thing, and I think it's something out of the box. I tell people this all the time, like, you know, if you don't want to allow them into your church or they don't, um, you know, come to church, then we'll bring the church house to them. <laughs> and that's exactly what we're doing. The Gangs for Jesus ministry is doing. Like I said, we're shaking the enemy's kingdom up, and we ain't scared. You know, a lot of places I preach, I, I, everyone knows me as a real raw, hardcore truth teller. And I tell people all the time when I preach, you know, because there's been incidences where, where people come in with guns and shoot people and stuff like that in America and churches. And I tell them, if someone comes in with a gun right now and points a gun at me and says, denounce Christ or you're going to die, I tell them, you're with the wrong preacher because you're with the gangster preacher. I tell them, we're all going to die up in here, but I'll see you in heaven if you're the real deal. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I just I just feel like there, there's such a need and... and um, you know, it, just just with COVID alone, w with what happened, God had spoke to me two years before COVID, and that's a whole nother story. But one thing I can say is that you can see even just what COVID did 
to the churches and how much it shook them to their foundations. That's right. And people were closing their churches down. People were were bowing down to the government because, you know, they rely on funds from them and stuff like that. You know, but what about us relying on God? Amen. What about us relying on King Jesus? Amen. What about us being truth tellers? You know, in these end times, you know, I'll say this and I'll pass it back to Tim because I don't know how much time I have, but I will say this. Everyone in the Bible that we look at as greats, you know, had pressure on them. Mm. You know, and pressure can either crush us totally and don't get this, don't get this, you know, wrong and, and, and don't get it twisted. COVID was, was something sent by the enemy to put pressure not only on this world, but especially the church to see mm. what, 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 what the members of the body of Christ would do in these end times. And let me tell you, he crushed many of the churches. But many of these people that we read about, you know, they, they had pressure on them, but it didn't crush them. The greatness of God, the anointing of God came out of their lives. And I will say this too, that if you read about Paul or Peter or John the Baptist or even Jesus or any of the greats in the Bible, you know, at the time, you know, now we read scriptures and we say, wow, what great, um, what great men of God they were. You know what I mean? And, 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 and people read these scriptures in their churches, but yet when they see a true soldier like me come in and preach truth, then, then they get offended. But the gospel is meant to be an offense. And if it doesn't challenge you to change, then there is no point in preaching this gospel. Mm. Because you, you see, then, then everyone thinks we could go on sinning and doing the same thing. But my point is, is that everyone in this Bible, you know, like the, the people I just mentioned, and, and, you know, they're considered greats now, but in their times, they were hated. They, they were killed for preaching truth. And for me, I believe we've reached that time again where we have to be truth tellers, whether it means imprisonment, whether it means jail, whether it even means death. Mm. And, and that's why my ministry is around the gangs for Jesus, handpicked soldiers by God himself. <laughs> Well, praise to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for this ministry. And as Pastor Isaiah was mentioning, let's circle back to what they do in his testimony because he has a book uh, that he titled From the Streets to the Throne. And I think it's something that it's, it's a blessing to the audience to hear. You know what? Maybe me going or fitting the norm is not me, but maybe with this ministry I can do something for Christ. Uh, share with us within this next five minutes, Pastor Isaiah, really quick. How did God call you to his glory? And especially in this time and season here living in El Paso. I know five minutes is short, brother. Yeah. But uh, use this five minutes so you can talk to maybe someone at home that's listening. And say, you know what? I have no hope. I have no nothing here to, to inspire me to live. What do you tell those people at home really quick, brother? I'll say this re re really quick. Um my book, again, is called From the Streets to the Throne by Isaiah Blanca. It's available on Amazon. Um, for my dates, I travel everywhere. I book every three months. I'm, I'm totally booked year-round. You can go to www.gangsterpreacher.com. And uh, also, there's a Facebook page called Gangsters for Jesus, and you'll see everything that goes on. I have my own personal Facebook page, too, where I share a lot. But I'll say this, um, and it's so much. I mean, you could see how, how thick my book is. <laughs> So, I mean, I can, you, you would have to get the book um, and read it. Uh, you could get it from me if you're around me or if you're at one of my events. I always have books on me. Um, but when I was um, nine years old, my dad ended up leaving with my aunt and leaving to California. My mom started uh, kicking me out uh, little by little, you know, on, on, the, on the streets. And eventually I ended up homeless at a young age. Um, I have scars on my wrist that you can still see till this day. Like if brother Tim looks at him, he could see him right here. Yes, sir. So you that. could, you could see the, the scars. So I was suicidal at that young age. Um, my life of crime started at that young age. I was nine years old when I first went to a detention home here in El Paso. Wow. Um, and from there, my, my life of crime started. And I just felt like I had to be, uh, one of the most ruthless or feared gangsters in El Paso. And that became my dream, and not just my dream, but a lot of my homeboys' dreams where I grew up, um, which was a rough neighborhood called the Jackie Robinson Projects. And so for me, that became my dream. You know, a lot of us, we didn't want to be doctors. We didn't want to be lawyers when we were little kids. We didn't want to be teachers. We didn't want to go to school. We wanted to go to prison. 
You know, that that was our goal. Our goal was to to be the baddest gang members in El Paso, Juarez, Mexico area, and also involved in organized crime later on in life. You know, that that was what we wanted. That's what we yearned to be and wanted to be and thrive to be and which we became. And, and so, you know, in, in kind of in a nutshell, um, I, I, I went through facilities my whole life and I ended up um, in Sanchez prison here. El Paso. Then I went to a, a, another prison program called Avalon Corrections. I ended up in um, ISF in Horizon, Texas. And that's where I met my chaplain, um, which her name is Gina Montes. And Gina was from East LA. And I'll just say this and I'll land and I'll, end and I'll pass it back to Tim. But Gina, um, I, I, I was so bad that I ended up doing a year in uh, solitary confinement, which on, on my, my gangsterpreacher.com, you'll be able to see my 700 Club interview um, on there. But, you know, I was, I was in there 23 hours a day, locked down. I was in something called Johnny Sacks. You know, the, the bologna was, was like greenish. You could shake the bologna and it wouldn't tear. I was eating that every single day for, for a whole year because of the type of knucklehead I had become. And, you know, I just... Um, the only way to come out and, 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 and come out anywhere was to go to church. Mm. Now, I didn't believe in God, and I didn't believe in the devil. And I would actually go out many times since I was in the juvenile system to make fun of preachers. This time, um, I said, you know what? Let, let me out of here. I'll go anywhere. So after, like, probably around a year, I went out, and I walked in this room. I was double the size I am now. I was a big guy. And I remember crossing my arms like this. Mm-hmm. And and um, Gina came right up into my face, and all I remember was spit flying all over my face. But she was <laughs> preaching the gospel so Hallelujah. hard that I was like, "Wow, this lady's nuts! Doesn't she know who I am? <laughs> like, like I'm one of the ones that runs it here." And uh, but she didn't care. I didn't even have time to to tell her um, anything. If you know, has she hurt someone or been in this place? And then she started giving me her testimony how broken she was. So long story short. Um, a, a guy, a guy um, shot dope up in that facility I was at and was old Dean and, uh, and ended up dying. And mm. she was hugging him on the floor crying. And it, it really mind baffled me. Mm. And I had become a hateful person. My heart was totally cold. And I remember when I saw this, I said, this lady loves people like me. And it's like Jesus had put a hook in my mouth. And I went back. And, and um, I gave my life to Christ, man. You know, that's just a little, uh, I guess, nutshell. But you'd have to get my book, uh, you know, <laughs> From the Streets to the Throne by Zeb Blancas, of course, and, and, and read it all. Amen, brother, to that. Wow, what, what a tremendous story, uh, especially for those who are out there hearing this message. Uh, chosen for glory does fit your, your calling because you went through a lot. So God can place you where you're at at this moment, Pastor Isaiah. So I, I praise God for your ministry, for the local brothers that I met that are friends of mine as well, where I see the heart, uh, the same condition that you received and you saw from this chaplain, Sister Gina. You guys are doing a great job. So Thank guys, you. if you, I mean, if you have someone that you know that needs, you know, a little tune-up or a little or shaken down, uh, get this book. Uh, there's testimonies here in El Paso. This local ministry does everything from the heart. I've seen what they've done. And, and one of the things that I, I love to hear, especially when there's time of ministry, Pastor Isaiah, and you get this a lot, is when they get that Jesus moment, when they come to the realization, hey, God has called me for his glory. I can do things within this world that are meant for something. I think God, no, I don't think, I believe God has called you for a time such as this. So I praise God for that. Now, before we leave, why don't you give us or allow us, brother, the privilege of, if you can, you know, dismiss us in prayer, yeah. pray for the people out there. We have a minute here to just, you know, okay. pound on, on. And like you mentioned, we're going to, we're going to give it to the devil. We know he's defeated. Yes. We Amen. know that he's under our feet, yep. but we know that our responsibility uh, within this world is to communicate and proclaim the gospel. Go ahead, yes. Pastor Isaiah. Father, I just thank you, Lord, yes, for the Lord. people watching this program, Father, I thank you, Father, that bless them, Lord. 
that it shakes them, Father, to their Amen. core, Lord. Amen. To be, to be, to be something different, Father, in you. Let there, uh, let there come, you know, just, just something great, Father, upon their lives, Father. A shift, Father. Let a shift come spiritually, yes, Lord. Father. I just thank you, God, that 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 people, not just in the world, but also in the church, are starting to open their spiritual eyes and see, Lord, and open Hallelujah. their spiritual ears and and hear, Father, from you, Lord, and know that that we're in end times, Lord. Yes. We are. I mean, we can't deny the signs. We can't deny the prophecies being fulfilled, Lord. Father, just shake them, Father. Let them let them even have dreams and visions, Father, while they sleep, Lord. Yes, let Lord. them know what times they're in, Father. Amen. Father, let them be people that save souls. I go to many churches where they move in the spirit realm, where they, you know, have a lot of wisdom, where they have a lot of knowledge, Father, where they say they're the best, you know, demon taker outers. But Father, if we're not saving souls, then it's worth nothing. Yes. Father, yes. we don't want them to, to go to hell and, and you tell them, depart from me, I never knew you, even though they said we took demons out. We prayed and cast this out in your name. We did this miracle and that miracle. Father, this, this morning, Lord, we just ask you to open eyes. Yes, Lord, right I thank here, you, Lord. God, for this time on this show. I thank you for, for Tim, Lord. I thank you for this ministry, Father, that's, yes. that's promoting the gospel. I pray blessings over and I pray blessings over the viewers, Lord, that they enjoyed it and that they take what we said to heart, Father, this morning. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, amen. We pray. Well, I want to thank uh, Pastor Isaiah for his time and his moment united with Christ. Also, keep in mind that we're still praying for... The peace of Israel. Yes. And we finalize this thought chosen for his glory. Thank yes. you again for joining us. God bless you. God bless. God bless. Pastor Isaiah.